Hi, my name is Pam Savino, and I would like to welcome you to the Live Authentically Show. My team and I help people live authentic lives and help them step into their realities and create lives they love. We would love to have you join our Facebook community. We can be found at liveauthentically.today slash FB, and you will be surrounded by a group of like-minded people who are committed to spiritual growth and transformation. And on today's show, I have a very special guest with us. Her name is Stephanie Jarmuth. And she is going to talk to us about hypnosis. She is the owner of Reroot Hypnosis and Wellbeing. And I would like to welcome you to the show, Stephanie. Hi, nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be here and share all of your wisdom and knowledge with us. My pleasure. Um, before we get going and talk about what you do on a daily basis and how you help your clients and what sets your soul on fire and all those fun things, I always start the show off with the same question. And that question is, what does it mean to you to live authentically every day? To get rid of all of the shoulds that you have been given during life. Like, you should be this, you should do this, you should look like this, you shouldn't do this, or you shouldn't behave that way or think this way, you know, because so many people throw these shoulds at you when you're a child and when, when you're growing up, even when you're not a child, and we adopt them because we... Mm -hmm. There's lots of reasons why we adopt them, wanting to fit in, wanting to get it right, wanting to live well, you know, and we think people that are older than us or maybe have something that we don't, that we do want, have what we need. And so we adopt their advice sometimes to a fault to us. And we layer ourselves with all of these. We should be this way. We should do this. We should live like this. And when you take all of those away, that's you. That's the true, authentic you. Right. And how would you help people? Like, what would you tell people they can do in order to start to discern whether or not they're doing things that are in alignment with who they are versus doing the things that they feel like they should be doing? A great way to begin doing that is to literally question everything you're doing in your life and everything you currently have in your life. Ask yourself why you are following this certain diet. Ask yourself why you are in the career you're in. And if the answer isn't because you like it or because you want to, that's a should. If the answer is, oh, I was told to, or I just feel I should, or I think this is the right way to do it because someone else did, those are adopted beliefs. Those are not your own. Mm -hmm. And yes, your own may be the same as another person, so it may not be adopted, However, the answer to those questions, when you start questioning everything you're doing and why you're doing it, that's when you'll find out if you are living authentically. Right. And what would you say about that process? I mean, how, what words of, wisdoms, what, what, what words of wisdom do you have for people when they ask, well, how long does it take me? How long until I can determine whether or not I'm living authentically and how do I get there? I mean, what would you say? I mean, I know that for me, it's been a very, it's been a very individual and very introspective journey. Mm -hmm. um, but what would you, what words of wisdom would you have as people navigate this? Cause I know it's kind of, there can be some trial and error involved. It's not necessarily a linear process, you know, going from A to B smooth mm -hmm. sailing. It definitely isn't a linear process, and I'm not sure it will ever end, really. <laughs> but when you begin is when you'll find out what you need to do next, and it kind of just unfolds itself, but you have to start small. You have to maybe take one area of your life and start questioning that. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the area of your health or the area of your career. Don't look at your whole life all of a sudden and be like, oh, I have to question everything and what's real and what's not you know start small so you don't overwhelm yourself and maybe even write everything down that you discover within yourself and uh, so it's all right there in front of you if you ever forget or if you want to just reflect on how far you have come and just like you said it is a very introspective thing you can't go to someone else and say am I living authentically am, am I doing this because I want to all of those questions have to be answered by you. Right, and right. we've been conditioned since, since such a young age that other people have the answers and they're supposed to tell us what's right and what's wrong. And right. we need to get out of that mentality in order to start 
seeing ourselves as that same authority figure that we looked for when we were younger. You are now your own authority figure. You're an adult. And so you are allowed to say yes and no to things, including beliefs and right. career paths. And so start small, write it down as you go, enjoy the process as much as possible. I mean, an introspective process isn't always the most enjoyable, but it's what you get on the other side of it Mm -hmm. that will be enjoyable. (laughs) Exactly. And I would like to echo how you said about, you know, be your own authority figure rather than just looking elsewhere for the answers. You know, I'm such a firm believer. And I know I think a lot of that is conditioning, right? We're conditioned when we grow up to seek, seek answers in through other people, through parents, through people who are older than, than we are who have had more life experiences. But we always have to caveat that with everything that they do and say is filtered through the lens of their own life experiences, which are vastly different than our life experiences. Right. Everything about our world, the way we see the world, our life experiences, the time period we're growing up with, mm-hmm. generational differences, all of that plays a role in in the answer, you know, what the right answer is for us. So I think that we have to be careful when we look out outside for answers. I'm such a firm believer that we already have our answers within. And like you said, it's a matter of just peeling back the layers and getting to the root of those of our authenticity. Mm -hmm. So that being said, that's a perfect segue into talking about you and your business and how you help people. I would love to hear how, first of all, maybe we can back up a step and talk about hypnosis. Can you just talk at a very high level, just very generally, what is hypnosis? What is the process? And then we can move into how it can help people um, heal and and live more authentically and discover the essence of who they are. Sure. I mean, just by the vocabulary that you're already using, and I'm sure a lot of your listeners are use as well, um, I'm sure you understand what the subconscious mind is. And right. how- I do, but maybe for our listeners, could you actually talk a little bit about, I'd love to hear you talk about the subconscious mind, how you define it, the conscious mind, the interplay between the two, the role they each play in guiding our lives. Yes, it's very important to understand that just because that's what hypnosis does is hypnosis directly communicates to the subconscious mind. And so I'll go through uh, the difference, I guess, between the conscious and subconscious mind in the quickest way I possibly can. (laughs) Um, The conscious mind is the host, the holder of our intellect, our reasoning ability, and the subconscious mind is our habits, our beliefs, our tendencies, our behaviors, our memories, our emotions, like that is the powerhouse, right? That hosts so much of who we are as the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. The subconscious mind is like running the show for us 90% of the time. And the conscious mind is only really running the show 10% of the time. And you can think about that as knowing that the subconscious mind hosts your habits and behaviors, pretty much everything you do throughout your day is habitual and or a tendency of yours, like which shoe you put on first, what leg you put into your pants first, which, um, how you brush your teeth, right? You don't have to sit there and consciously think about doing all of those things. And it's a great thing that our brain does for us, having this subconscious mind. It's amazing because imagine how long it would take to brush your teeth or tie your shoes if every single time you had to apply all of your conscious reasoning ability and intellect into doing that simple thing. Right. The, two, the, wor- the way the two work together, and I like to use the example of driving because so many people drive. When you first learn how to drive, you have to do it very consciously. You have to realize what you're doing. You have to think, okay, wait, now's a good time to start pressing the brake, right? And uh, you have to think, when you get into the car, what do I do first? Adjust the mirror, put my seatbelt on. But now you have driven so many times that it has become such an ingrained habit that you can daydream while you're driving right? and still drive safely, right? right. And so that's how the two play together. You consciously have to do something enough times through repetition and consistency, and mm-hmm. then your subconscious mind learns, oh, we should probably just adopt that as a habit in order to make the life easier, right? Mm-hmm. Your subconscious mind is there to serve you. It is trying to help you make your life easier. The thing is it doesn't know the difference between good and bad. That's why bad habits are also adopted in the same way good ones are Mm -hmm. like drinking or smoking or overeating, you know, and I just list those three because they're very common bad habits. Um, 
But yeah, so the subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between good and bad. All it wants to do is store your habits to make your life easier. Okay. And what hypnosis does is it kind of bypasses that conscious intellect and mm-hmm. speaks directly to the subconscious mind, where your habits, beliefs, emotions, and behaviors and identities live. Mm-hmm. And I like to give the example of if I were to just see my client, right, and we don't put them in hypnosis yet. We're just both very in a very conscious waking state, having a conversation with one another, and they're coming to me because they want more confidence in their life. Mm-hmm. I could sit there without hypnosis being um, or have had happened yet and tell them you're beginning to feel more com- more confident each and every day. Their conscious mind using the intellect is going to be like, no, that doesn't make any sense. No, I'm not. Nothing has happened from five minutes ago and five minutes ago is not a confident person, right? The conscious mind is there with its intellect right. and reasoning. Right. The doubt and right. Yes. And so when you go into hypnosis, your brain waves lower. Okay. You have the highest brain wave, which is your conscious state, like you and I are in our highest brain waves right now. And then you go lower and lower as you relax more and more until you hit sleep. And right above sleep is the level of hypnosis where you're still mostly there, but your conscious mind doesn't know that you're not going to sleep, if that makes sense. Your conscious mind just knows, oh, it's time to relax. I don't need to be such a guard now. I don't need to use all my intellect because who needs to be intellectual when they're relaxing? Right. (laughs) And so when you go into hypnosis, that's how you're able to kind of bypass that intellectual aspect of a person and speak directly to where their issue is right the bad habit they're that they're coming to me to help the break the identity that they want to now have rather than the identity that they once had like they want to be confident rather than not confident right and so when you're able to speak to the root of all of these attributes and characteristics and habits you're able to make change on such a quicker and more permanent level than using the old method of getting a habit into your subconscious, which is what I was saying when I gave the example of driving. I mean, that's a very, that's pretty much the normal waking way in order to store a habit. You just constantly have to do it over and over and over. But if you kind of want to not have to do that and speed up the process of change, you use hypnosis. Okay. Wow, that is incredibly interesting. Um, who are your, do you have certain a certain niche within hypnosis or do you see people who are dealing with all types of things like limiting beliefs and addictions and, um, and, and things like that? I mean, what do you, can you talk a little bit about the type of clients that you see? Sure. I mean, I've seen clients all over the board. I have not niched down in my hypnosis practice. There are some hypnotists who only see smoking clients, people that want to stop smoking. There are some people that only see weight loss clients. I haven't niched it down because I really haven't had a desire to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I just love helping people better their lives. I mean, I could say a majority of my clients, it is getting rid of negative beliefs. I've only had maybe six or seven smoking clients. I've had maybe a dozen weight loss clients. Mm -hmm. The majority of the clients that I see, it is shifting identity levels, ridding of negative beliefs, stopping self-sabotage, all of those things. And even some of the weight loss and smoking clients that I see, when we really dig down into why they overeat or don't exercise or why they smoke, it has to do with a limiting belief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right something deeper so hypnosis allows you to identify those deeper issues and sort of reprogram at that level so that we can make better choices with our conscious mind is that basically it in in a nutshell yes absolutely how how would someone oh i'm sorry go ahead there was just a little oh just yeah one last like idea that just popped in my head um with hypnosis all you're really doing is introducing a new idea or suggestion into the subconscious mind where it's where it kind of like it's like a seed that's planted there right and then it grows throughout your day and the way it grows is through your conscious decisions we 
Like if someone were to come to me for to make better health choices, eating wise, right? We plant that seed of health, or we plant that seed of being worthy of health, right? Mm -hmm. And then throughout the rest of their days, because they're not going to wake up the next day 50 pounds lighter, right? Right. It's a matter of them then being able to consciously choose healthier decisions. So how would someone know, like, okay, I'm at a point where I think I could benefit from hypnosis. How would someone know when it's time to engage in hypnosis as a, mo- as a healing modality? When they are 100% decisive, when they've officially decided, because I like to also reference the fact that some people, like they kind of want to, and I always go back to health because it's such a like universal example, but some people have decided, oh yeah, it'd be nice to be healthier, Mm -hmm. but it isn't totally, I'm not totally uncomfortable with where I am. They're not really like, 100% a hundred percent yes committed okay. and hypnosis is as effective as you are decisive once you okay. have really decided you know what i need to stop or i need to implement this or mm-hmm. i'm sick and tired of how things have gone thus far or something along those lines once you are decisive once you are committed to yourself that's where we can do the most powerful change. Cause yeah, I could still work with someone that's not a hundred percent on board with their new weight loss Mm -hmm. idea or their new health kick. Whereas it's just a, Oh, that'd be nice kind of thing. I could still work with one of those clients and we can get to the root of why they don't, why they aren't committing. Maybe there's some self-sabotaging limiting beliefs in there that we can rid of, and then it'd be easier for them to decide. But the most powerful, effective change is always with the clients who come with a purpose, who Mm -hmm. say, I need this, I want this, it's time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm ready. And I think that's so, that's so important. And I, you know, I use the energy to, or the um, analogy to, I talk, when I talk about energy, just, you know, nobody ever benefits from split energy, right? I mean, either you need to have your energy concentrated and be, be fiercely focused on what it is that you want, because that ambivalence is what's going to give us the mixed results, right? So I can see how in this, in this scenario, you have to be committed, you have to be willing to sign up and show up and be open minded and willing to reprogram and do the work so that you can, because the same behaviors and habits that have gotten you thus far are not going to get you the different results. So it's, it's it's totally important, I think, to come in, like you said, just being ready to commit open-minded and just be in that space where you're ready to embark on a new trajectory. But Mm -hmm. I always, even in coaching, I talk to people about just split energy. You have to, you know, whether it's whatever situation is, if you're, if you're going to get divorced, you know, just be on that path, be on that path, pour all of your energy into your new life because you don't want to be kind of straddling two different realities. I've got one foot over here, you know, I'm divorced, but I wish I was still married or I'm married and I'm not happy. It's pick a path and commit to it. And then that's when you really start to see the results. Right. Because I'm not sure how much you talk of or how deep you're into it about if you, if you believe in the law of attraction oh, or yeah, what you put out, you put yes. it, right? Yes. Karma, whatever you want to call it, you're sending very mixed signals to right. the universe or God or whatever you believe in when you are not decisive. Right. When you say, oh, I want to have a job in which I travel the world, but I also mm-hmm. like want this house with a garden that I have to tend to every day. Right. You know, like, right. Exactly. How right. is the universe even going to give you what you want when you don't know it? Right. Exactly. So yes, I am a firm believer in that. I, I teach that. I preach that and yes. being really, really clear in what you want. I mean, that's always what I, when I talk about law of attraction with people, get really, really clear. Otherwise the universe doesn't know what to give you, right? It's can yeah. give you kind of a pat, you get a patchwork quilt. You're trying to, to create this beautiful monochromatic quilt, but you end up with a patchwork quilt because the universe doesn't know what to give you. It gives you a little of this and a little of that. And it kind right. of maybe sort of matches what you want, but not really. And you've got to get really, really clear on what you want. And I think that also applies to your line of work. You've got to get really, really clear and commit to commit to the results. Yeah. Um, And I have consultations with people that could last up to two hours because we're just going back and forth 
mm-hmm. and getting them decisive basically right. they just don't even know they have an idea mm-hmm. but they're not committed yeah. and what we do in our consultation or before the first session is we sit down and we knit pick their thoughts and ideas and we figure it out clear mm-hmm. and simple until they walk out even if we don't do hypnosis that day they walk out with more clarity than they walked in with right right and then their intentions are more more pure and heart centered. And I think that's always, that's another thing that I always say, the universe is always anxious to honor heart centered requests. You know, it can tell if it's coming from your heart, if it's coming from your soul, if you're something you really want versus, yeah, you know, it'd be nice to lose weight, but I'm not really, it can, it can sense that energy. So it's so important to get into that space before you enter a, you know, any type of, before you engage in any type of healing program, I think too, even with coaching or whatever it is, um, you need to be fully invested and fully committed um, mm-hmm. before you can expect to receive the results. Right. So I would love to hear about how you got into this line of work. Can you walk me kind of through the chronology of your history and how you ended up where you are? Sure. So I was having terrible insomnia for about two years. I'd wake up five to six times a night, and it wasn't just like an open my eyes, go back to sleep thing. It was uh, oh. I would wake up and I'd be up. It was exhausting. It drained me of all my energy, my happiness, all of it. I'm sure. And I knew I didn't want to take pills because then I'd be reliant on them to go to sleep for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And so I was looking for every natural remedy under the sun, right? And I'm not even really sure how I stumbled upon hypnosis. It was probably like a Google search, right? Um, And I found a local hypnotist and... I went to him, not even sure that it would work because until that day, I had never heard anything about hypnosis except for like stage shows, like entertainment, comedy aspects of it. And so I said, well, I'm not going to be any worse off if I try. (laughs) And so uh, I went and within one session, I was sleeping like a baby. Oh, wow. Yeah. It just one session. Yes. It fascinated me. I mean, it fascinated me to the extent, like, I just deep dove into it. I got books. I talked to people. I emailed other hypnotists. Like, I went to the hypnosis annual, like, conference over in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And through synchronicity and all of those things, I was presented with the opportunity to then take a certification program. And Mm -hmm. still at that time, I was just learning and inquisitive. I wasn't even thinking, oh, this is going to be a career path, right? Mm -hmm. I was just wanting to know more because I really didn't understand it in the slightest. And so I took my certification program and then throughout the certification program and in order to prove that you can do it and that you've learned how to do it you have to hypnotize people and once I started hypnotizing people and seeing their lives changed I was hooked I was like oh my god I have to do this to as many people as I can because it's just like it's amazing it is it truly is wow I'm sure it was amazing to witness and there's really nothing more powerful just nothing more that fuels my soul than knowing that you've played an active role in helping someone else enhance their life, either mind, body, or spirit. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's just something. It just fuels you. I mean, the more you pour into it, the more you get back. And it's just that constant cycle of energy. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, I was actually surprised to hear that you had results and pleasantly, you know, I was happy to hear you had results after just one session. And that's one thing I was going to ask you is what can people expect in terms of results after, after sessions? You know, can you see huge huge gains after one session or do you usually sell in packages or do you work with people over, you know, weekly on a weekly basis for several months? You know, how does that work and what can people expect? Well, the idea of hypnosis is that you get quick and lasting and permanent results and quick being one of the key words there. And just like we were talking about how the person needs to be committed and desire and desire the change. Right. The more they desire it, the faster it'll work. The more they are committed, the quicker it will work. I've had plenty of clients I've only seen once because they came with such strong like desire and like I'm ready. I just need that first I need that first push. I need that first mm-hmm. kickstart. I need that idea of health or wealth or abundance or whatever it is they're coming to me for or confidence, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I need that idea planted in there for me 
and I can do the rest. I am that committed. I want it. Those are the clients I see once. Other okay. clients I've seen about three times. So I offer one session um, packages or three yeah. or six. Okay. Uh, the only time I ever see anyone more than three or six sessions is, is if they're coming back for something else. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, it also, I should also mention that it really depends on how honest the client is with me. Mm -hmm. Because again, if there's like a self-sabotaging tendency, we need to work on that too before we work on any other change. Or perhaps I've had this with uh, smoking clients where it didn't work after the first session. And, I, and then they come back the second session and they're like, well, I'm still smoking. I'm like, okay, well, were you honest with me the first time that we saw each other? Why do you smoke? What do you get out of it? Because it right. provides something for you if you keep doing it. Right. And then they're realizing like, oh, okay, well, if I stop smoking, then I lose out on those like six breaks at work. And I really like to take those breaks. Okay. You know what I mean? There's that underlying benefit that they're getting that they're not telling me about. So, mm -hmm. we, so we're not addressing it. But once they tell me about that, then we can do something about it. Okay. That makes sense. Or people that want to lose weight or be healthier. If they're not telling me they eat when they get emotional, mm -hmm. we got to work on that because that's huge. Right. Humans are emotional beings. If that's a tendency of yours, we need to work on it. We can't just plant the idea of health. We need to take out that coping mechanism as well. Right. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. Are there any modalities that pair well with, um, with hypnosis and helping to maintain the long lasting benefits of hypnosis? Self-hypnosis. Can you tell me about that? Sure. I teach classes on self-hypnosis once a month, and I always encourage my clients to come to them. Um, but self-hypnosis is very similar to, like, intentional meditation, I like to call it. Okay. It's getting yourself, and I provide, I give my students and my clients the tools and all of the the how to do it, basically. I teach them how to do it, but you're basically relaxing yourself with an intentional way. Whereas with meditation, you kind of, you just sit there and you try to clear your mind of all thoughts and you mm -hmm. focus on your breathing. Whereas with self-hypnosis, you're still getting yourself into a deeply relaxed state, but there's an intention. The intention with meditation is to clear your mind and the intention with self-hypnosis is to focus in on that one thing that you're trying to work on. Okay. And so pairing self-hypnosis with our session is very beneficial, very powerful. And I'll always recommend regular meditation along with anything, whether you do hypnosis or not, mm -hmm. um, just that at least five minutes per day of clearing your mind and slowing your breath down is probably one of the most powerful things in the world. And, um, but besides that, pairing with hypnosis, um, yeah, meditations and self-hypnosis, I would say, are the best that work alongside it. Okay, and you said meditation five minutes a day, and how often would you recommend that people do self-hypnosis? Every night. Every night, okay. Yeah, it doesn't need to, it does not like a long process, like where, whereas like the session with me and the person can last anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. Okay. Self-hypnosis can be done in five minutes, and I do self-hypnosis every single day, and it's the one thing I have that's constant in my life. It's the one thing that I can almost measure because what I'm doing my self-hypnosis about or on is reflecting in my life. It's a very easy way to see if it's working or not because you'll begin to see it in your life. Can you give us an example of that, either from your own personal experience or something that you've witnessed in somebody else as, as to how their lives actually started to change on a daily basis. Oh, sure. Oh, my goodness. So I'll go back to the example of confidence. I've had a few clients where they may have not come to me initially because they want to be more confident, but after talking, after having a consultation, we realized that if they just had more confidence, their issue that they did come for would be resolved, right? There was their issue was more of a symptom than it was the cause, and the cause was actually their lack of self-confidence. And so I'll use that example, whereas 
when you are confident in your ability, and I'll just leave that blank, not confident in your ability to do blah, confident in your ability mm -hmm. to do anything, you will do anything. You can do anything. Whereas someone who has the ingrained belief of, I don't know if I could do that. You know, they just have all those self-conscious or non-confident thoughts. It will affect their everyday life. And so when we plant the seed during hypnosis of ability and confidence, all of a sudden their thought process about every decision in their life is going to change. Their thought process about any risk they want to take in life is going to change rather than it being like, a, oh no, I don't think we should do that. I don't know if we'll be able to. To, it'll be well at least we could try we could figure it out right mm -hmm. and so when we plant seeds like that seeds of confidence or ability or worth or deservingness every single decision or risk or opportunity in their life is going to have a different internal conversation and it's going to cause them to make much different actions and decisions throughout their life. And I've worked with self hypnosis on for with myself on confidence as well, being confident business owner, being a confident hypnotist, right? It's a little, um, it's a little funny to think about, like, to be a confident hypnotist, I did my own self hypnosis. Um, but yeah, I've used self hypnosis for containing my own habits. Uh, for in adopting new habits for releasing some old ones I didn't want anymore mm -hmm. um, old negative beliefs I carried from childhood around money because that was blocking my business for a while okay. um, so I would and it all, all goes back to what we were talking about in the beginning how if you begin to question everything you're doing and you're not doing it because you want to and because you love to and just be, because you want to and it brings you joy you're doing it because someone else told you you should. Those are the things you could work with self-hypnosis about. Those are the things you could be like, or just for example, if you have a, um, a belief that you have to slave away night and day in order for your business to survive or thrive, you have to hustle and you have to get to the grind, you know, all of these sayings that people say, which are very exhausting to think about. Like, I don't want to work night and day to have a successful business. That was a belief I had. And in the beginning of my business, I was literally, and I still had a part-time job at the time because it was just starting. I would come up with my part-time job. I would be at my computer doing business stuff until I went to sleep and then wake up and I exhausted myself and it took the joy out of my business. And so I did my own self hypnosis about releasing that belief entirely. I don't need to work night and day for my business to survive. And I chose a different belief instead to implant within my mind. Whereas I take aligned action at every perfect opportunity and everything will unfold perfectly. Right. It's a much uh, better belief and thought to have than, oh, I got to get back to my computer. Oh, I can't stop now. Right. Things. Do you even witness a different internal dialogue that you have with yourself now? Do you notice that when in situations that you hear, you're hearing different thoughts, you're saying different things to yourself as a result of the hypnosis? Yeah. I mean, again, bringing it back to the beginning, whereas like when I first started on my like self introspection, mm -hmm. introspective journey, I was just questioning myself so often it became a habit. Now I just question why I think things and mm -hmm. why I do things all the time. If it comes to my business and I have like some intuitive idea, I'll question that idea. Do I have that idea or belief that this will work or that I should do this because I saw someone else do it? Or mm -hmm. do I have that idea or belief because that's actually what I want to do. And so the questioning itself has become a habit and just the internal dialogue around what it means to be a business owner and what it means to be able to serve and help people has changed entirely. Right. Mm -hmm. And you had, you used that word serve. And I love that um, because I'm starting to do some thinking and some just, um, meditating just around the whole idea of service, service versus yeah. work, right? Service, service is, I mean, the universe loves when we're in a 
place of serving others. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I think that, you know, if we, if we look hard enough, we can find acts of service or the spirit of service in so much of what we do. We don't, it doesn't always have to be in a profession where we are directly working with a client. You know, I can, I'm by sometimes just even a mundane task, such as making dinner, you know, that's an act of service because I'm serving my family. I'm making a nutritious and delicious meal. And I think that's the key is to get yourself in that space of service. And I think, I believe that everybody can do that no matter who they are. They can either, right. they're either serving others or they're serving themselves in some way. And when we're serving, when we're coming from that space of our heart and our soul, that's what, that's when things start to unfold organically. That's when we experience ease. When we're serving, when we're not working, when we're not grinding it out, when we're not hustling, when we're, when we're not exhausted, when we're serving, because then that's backed with love. That's backed with, backed with kindness. It's backed with compassion. It's backed with a commitment to help others on their journeys. It's, a, it's a, backed with that commitment to be stewards on their journeys and help them to expand their minds and you know, open their hearts and improve right. physically and um, expand spiritually. So I think it's just so important to reframe and think about what we do in, in the way of serving others. Yeah. And you, sir, you have, um, you know, it's such, it's been so amazing to hear about your story and your work and how you are changing lives, literally changing lives on a daily basis. And I applaud you and congratulate you on all of your accomplishments that you've already accomplished okay. and the ones you have yet to come. I know you're just at the, you know, you're just, you've got so many amazing things ahead of you. And I was super excited to hear that you're local, by the way, I have actually never done officially done hypnosis and I've always wanted to try it. So now that I met you, I would love to come visit you sometime. That'd be great. So um, I'm always looking to incorporate it kind of in the spirit of growth. You know, I can't preach growth and transformation if I'm not committed to that myself. I believe right. that today we are, we are, you know, learning and we have opportunities to grow and learn. And I'm always looking to incorporate new modalities into my repertoire. So you can't just talk the talk. You got to walk the walk, you yeah, know? Absolutely. So I will definitely come see you. I'm delighted that our paths have crossed and have, and yeah. I'm delighted that you've taken time out of your busy day to be on my show. So um, if people would like to get a hold of you directly, how can they do that? The best way is through my website because it has all the other forms of communication, like my phone number and my email and all of that. Um, so my website is rerootehypnosis.com, R-E-R-O-O-T, hypnosis.com. And yeah, that's the best way because I could ramble off my phone number as well, but it's all on the website. And so on the website, you could also learn more about hypnosis itself. You could take a quiz as to how hypnotizable you are. Okay. There's a lot of fun stuff on there. There's a lot of articles about mindset, hypnosis, um, self-beliefs, identity, fear-based thinking, all that jazz. Oh, great. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you again for your time today. I would also like to thank our viewers and listeners for tuning into the show. Time is a choice, and I'm grateful that you've chosen to tune in with us today. Remember to visit our Facebook community, which is liveauthentically.today slash FB. We would love to have you as part of our growing community of people committed to growth and transformation. So thank you again, and hope you all have a great day. Mm -hmm.